I'm super busy with my family and rarely have the luxury of arriving the prescribed one hour plus before a race to properly warm up. Typically, I get there 30 minutes before the start, barely make registration, and if I have time after pinning up and setting up my bike, I'll get a little bit of riding around but in the parking lot and then just go straight to line up. I've heard as long as your warm-up falls within 24 hours, it counts as a warm-up. And actually, Chad's debunked that before. Um, so there are plenty of episodes. If you search Ask a Cycling Coach Warm-Up, he's talked about that in plenty of cases where um, the how long the effects of a warm-up last and how long they go. And, and we're talking, you know, if it's within an hour, it will have some sort of effect. And usually if it's after that, I believe what Chad has referenced is where it starts to, the, the, the effect starts to go away. The beneficial effects of a warm up, which is increased blood circulation, you know, capillary action that's basically opening up with that. And then of course, muscle fiber recruitment, neuromuscular firing patterns, all that stuff coming online, so to speak. And of course, metabolism working. So starting to burn some carbs. So uh, he says, uh, I always have a window to hop on the trainer or to hop on trainer road first thing in the morning on race day. And he says, I'm wondering if I get proper 30 to 45 minute warm ups, would this count as a proper race venue warm up? Uh, he says, of course, nothing beats the real one, but maybe that could help. So we've kind of debunked that one for, for you in this case, Mark, in that if you're going to warm up, you want to do it within an hour. And really, ideally, uh, any time within an hour is, is okay. But um, giving yourself somewhere around like 15 minutes or so to cool down from your warm-up is usually ideal. But Alex, I wanted to get the, you on here for this because what is, what's your warm-up protocol? I would assume that you have one. Yeah. Uh, my usual warm-up is start five minutes, ramping up to endurance, and then an eight-minute progression to race pace or threshold somewhere around there. And then two minutes easier, five minutes endurance with three quick eight second spin ups, nothing like full effort, but just touch on that system. And then pretty much from there, spin to the line or spin as much as you can until you get to the line. Yeah. How long would you ideally leave until the end of your warm up and getting to the starting line? With UCI racing, we normally have call ups 10 to 15 minutes before. Um, so I normally start my warm up like 45 minutes before race start. And then if I need to extend out that spin, that's fine. That just keeps keeps the body going. I've even been known to do what I call the enduro spin, which I'll line up actually next to the gate, clipped in and hold on and spin backwards. <laughs> so during that time, I can still kind of keep moving. But for us, it's a little more straightforward because our spots are selected for us. Whereas in the amateur ranks, there's more jostling for that front row. Like the earlier you get there, the more likely you are to start at the front. Does that change at all for marathon races? Like, do you change your warm up protocol for something that's longer? Yeah, I mean, something that's as long as Leadville and with the, the start as it is, I actually don't warm up. I just show up to the line and, and that cruise to the bottom of Kevin's will be the warm up. It also depends, right? Because, like, the epic rides, a lot of them start pretty much up a climb and then dive into single track. So, you need some sort of warm up to be ready for that high intensity. It tends to be just how the race is going to start. So if it's going to be a high intense effort, you don't want to just go nothing into that. But if it's going to be like, you know, a road race or, or a longer day that starts pretty mellow in a group, then you can kind of build your way into it. One of the things I want to cover on the start is what are, do you have any strategies you, that you like, what do you look for in a starting position? And do you do anything unique on the start to help you? Like, what have you learned throughout your whole process? Um, it depends. For UCI racing, it also depends like which row I'm on. The farther back I am, I actually look to go to the outside of the corner because everybody's going to dive inside and there's normally like a channel around that first corner. So if, for example, if the, if the first one is like a sweeping right-hand turn, I'd, I'd try to line up on the left. Um, if you're in the front, obviously you try to line up so you got the shortest path to that, probably a few spots from the right. Um, they're just kind of looking at what the start looks like, but also like the terrain you're on, right? Like if you're on loose gravel, like brushing your rear tire on that. So you're not starting on over a rock. Like you can actually like either sweep your back tire back and forth or just get your hand down there and make a little patch so that that first acceleration, you're not putting too much torque into the rear wheel and just blowing through a pedal stroke. Um, I also set up I start left foot clipped in right foot on the ground and I set up my pedal so that when it's coming up, it's flat. So it's not like vertical and hitting my cleat. The wrong yes. Way. I've never heard that. That's awesome. 
<laughs> Nate's got detailed tips. Yeah. yeah. So it, you just change the position of the pedal and then you know when you rotate it, it'll be in the right spot, you're saying? Correct. And you can even do that by like setting it up where you wanted it in the right spot and then back pedaling to where you want to be. And another mm -hmm. advantage of the bike yoke droppers is I start with my dropper down so I can sit firmly on the saddle. Yeah, that's a that's an overlooked thing. I see a lot of people with droppers and they start with their saddle all the way up in the air. And you don't have to drop it all the way. You can just drop it like a portion of the way, right? Yeah. How much Alex, drop what, do you have on your... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nate, go ahead. That was going to be my question. How much drop do you use? And then uh, what pedals do you use? Uh, the dropper is a bike yoke Divine SL. So it has 80 mils of drop. And the fun thing about those is it's a dropper that you can actually cut, which is part of the reason I like it. So I was able to cut the bottom of mine since I don't use it all and it saves 30 grams. So the actual, the whole system is 365 grams. Well, that's, that's including remote. Yeah. Oh, that's light. Yeah. That's yeah. lighter than the carbon post that I have, the KS Lev. So yeah. yeah. And yeah. then for pedals, I run Shimano XTR and that's just because they're bomb proof and you can clip into them hundred percent of the time. I used to run Expedos and I just, I'd get caught. They had seemed to have sharp edges and they would catch my shoe. Yeah. We were just talking about that. How it, I like them because I feel locked in and that's what I currently run. And they are super light. They're awesome in that regard. They're really light, but they, I feel like they wear out fast and then yeah. the cleats also wear out fast, but the pedal body itself also starts to like wear out to the point where it's like harder to, to clip in and out. And it gets kind of tricky in that regard. And the mm -hmm. Shimano's are just dead easy to clip into and yeah. you can bash them on anything and they usually keep going. So, Yeah. Which it, uh, for a race like Cape Epic, especially right, Nate, is like super important. Durability is like, has to be a concern. So I assume so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. If you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. Maybe even give this video a like with a thumbs up and a comment down below. If you want to see race analysis videos, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, which you should, you should go over to trainerroad.com. It'll make you faster. We promise. We guarantee it, right, Nate? Guaranteed. <laughs> or your money back. Yes, it's true, actually. We, we really will do that. Yeah.